Well, hi everyone. Believe it or not, I'm in Providence, Rhode Island, right here in front of RIDOT headquarters. I came here because I've done over 20 videos on the Washington Bridge, and I thought it was time to come out and see it for myself. I also have a lot of great con connections and contacts that I've made out here, and I wanted to talk to them, get to know them better, learn more information that they had for me. I've got many, many more videos coming. I am not laying off this story whatsoever. You know, uh, a big channel, Practical Engineering Grady over there, he did a video on Washington Bridge, it was his first one, and he gave me a shout out in that video, and that's one of my objectives. I'm trying to serve a local audience here, I've got a local following, people are interested in my content on this bridge, and I really want this story to go national, because I think it's going to take the scrutiny of outside entities, large media organizations, uh, federal government, others to really crack this nut here that is Rhode Island DOT and Rhode Island state government in general. When I was scoping out the location of RIDOT's headquarter office, I was surprised to realize that the Capitol building is just across the street. And so obviously on this channel, I focus primarily on technical aspects of engineering and construction, but I quickly came to realize that most of the issues associated with the Washington Bridge here in Providence, Rhode Island have to do with politics. And when you've got the proximity of the State House uh, that close to the headquarters building, it, it makes you think that there's a lot of political influence going on here. So again, I'm going to have many videos generated as a result of my visit here. So stay tuned. I'm probably make other trips back here. It's been a very interesting trip. Uh, met a lot of great people. So please stay tuned. So after my visit to the Rhode Island DOT headquarters, I was taken on a boat ride to the Washington Bridge by a group of concerned citizens. We had some things we wanted to check out firsthand. I know I feel like I was invited by the governor indirectly to come closer to this bridge that I've been covering so many stories about. I, to see if we can see what, if anything, is underneath there. Now we have Rob Cody here. He's getting ready to lower the underwater camera. We had reports of tremendous amount of debris under the water, contrary to what Director Alviti has represented in various interviews since early February. And so I videoed off the display screen, there's massive amounts of debris. This is reinforced concrete. This isn't some little piece of concrete that fell over the side of a barge. I'm gonna show you exactly where this piece came from, or the type of concrete that it is. Just a massive chunk of reinforced concrete. And we can see here more of this structure. What it appears to be is the curved outer face of one of the bridge piers, what the crew's been calling a corbel. So if you look at the top of this pier cap, that column is missing, but it's present over here. This is what we're looking at in the water. That's about a 20 to 30 foot length of concrete in the water. I think it probably came from Pier 3. So let's look, yeah, you can see that curved face of that corbel. You can make it out in the image here. This is not the lost city of Atlantis. This is what you get when you hire the high bidder apparently. Two million dollars high compared to the competing firm. Obviously they got a job to do to demolish the bridge but they're supposed to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. And that is demolish the bridge and then follow all the protocols. So again, we're talking about this structure here. It's missing on this pier, still present here. That's what appears to be a large piece of reinforced concrete in the Seekonk River here at the bridge location. Let's look at some more images. You see the steel reinforcing. This is not a little piece.
There's probably about 100 tons of reinforced concrete there at just this one location. Okay, so Rob collected some samples of concrete. Director Alviti said that uh, they had tested the concrete for asbestos, but indications were that that was probably only done at the bridge deck, which according to my local contacts is a much newer construction than the other structural elements of the bridge. Okay, so this is the piece from the, what they call the spandrel, the, the, fa the, fa the fascia, the fascia girders, what I was calling it. Okay. So why would there be asbestos in the concrete? It was used pretty commonly in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, provided some increased durability to the concrete, mostly through tensile reinforcement. We know Aetna's proposal excludes any testing of the material, so apparently they're relying on the tests that RIDOT had had performed, but again, there's some uncertainty as to where that sample was taken relative to what my local contacts are telling me. So these samples will be sent off to a lab to analyze for asbestos. Now I'm gonna play some earlier segments. This was recorded in February on WPRO, early February, February 3rd. This was the Monday after the weekend where various videos of massive sections of the fascia girders were being dropped unceremoniously on top of the barges. All right, over the weekend, you may have seen the video of a portion of the Washington Bridge demolition coming down, dropped right onto two barges below. Oh, my. saw the video and to the untrained eye it looks like it was looks like it was violent like they just dropped it and some of it hit the barge looks like it pushed the barge below the water and some of it fell off the edges into the river and there's a lot of speculation as to whether this job has been done right and it feeds into this whole narrative of what the bridge and everything another screwed up job peter alvidi is making a special call to push back on all of this and to tell us it was done exactly as planned. The DOT director is on the line. Go ahead, Peter. It doesn't look good when you watch the video. What do you want to add to this? Well, uh, it looks the way it looks. Uh, there, the demolition was planned. It was controlled and it was executed in accordance with the plan. And the result was exactly what the plan showed the results would be. So some debris falling off. Was that anticipated too? Yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, look, you know, the, the barges were put there to collect the major portion of the structure that came down. A very small amount compared to the amount that came down, a very small amount went in the water, and they were relatively small chunks that can easily be picked up and removed. I think we set it up. I, I'm sure a lot of people heard you this morning. I just had a couple of other questions, so I appreciate your time. Again, just to reiterate, uh, it looked big, loud messy but you say that that was a controlled situation yes it's, it, it is controlled demolition the, we had a plan that was approved for this demolition that showed uh, in detail with what kind of equipment where it would be placed how they would proceed and what it would look like coming down um, how the barges would be positioned how they would catch the debris how the barges would be protected um, and it all, it all uh, was executed by the contractor on Friday and Saturday in precisely the manner that the, the plans call for, and the structure acted precisely the way that it was planned, and they fell onto the barges below um, very much in a way to, co to contain that, um, pretty much the entire portion of the structure from falling into the river. Uh, there were some smaller pieces that fell into the river, but we had um, CRMC permits that um, allow for, they understand that this is demolition, that some of the debris would go into the river. Uh, they were out there with me this morning to review um, how the demolition went, uh, and they instructed us to pick up the pieces that fell off to the side. They're not 
very big compared to the volume that fell onto the barges. And we'll get that cleaned up, and uh, they were fine with that and signed off on it. So um, things went according to the plan, and um, it was nicely executed. Yeah, what a bunch of garbage comments from the director of Rhode Island DOT. Now keep in mind, that was for the demolition of the superstructure, the Gano Street ramp. They started the demolition of the substructure, basically the piers that you saw in the water, the portions of the pier. That happened in mid-February, so a couple of weeks after he's representing everything's going to plan. So essentially it went from bad to worse in terms of their essentially indiscriminate dropping of large pieces of reinforced concrete into the Seekonk River. That is contrary to their permit, and that's contrary to their approved demolition plan. So I ask you, that was on Monday, February 3rd. As I mentioned, all this blew up over the weekend in early February when those videos surfaced on various social media outlets. So this is coming from Anthony Pompey. He's the project manager for Rhode Island DOT for the demolition of the Washington Street Bridge. He's also the project manager for the design build replacement of the Washington Bridge. So he sends this email to a guy named Gentry Andrews. The director had asked for the Gano ramp demo plan that Vinagro was showing him online on site so I forwarded him the attached approved plan from Procore. After he started looking after he started taking a look, he noticed the list of 18 general notes on page 3 of 105 of the PDF. He's going to ask tomorrow whether we have any documentation that the contractor actually followed the notes shown. Most of them are pretty straightforward and there really isn't anything to be done unless there were changes noted in the field, but an odd one is number 16. It states all barges, equipment, and operations must be evaluated by a qualified naval architect. And the field conditions, that is water depth, must be in accordance with the naval architect's requirements. I have to say this is the first time I can ever recall seeing a reference to a naval architect, but I'm wondering if there was any discussion about this requirement in the field. If not, maybe you could try and have a conversation with a contractor in the morning before our field meeting to see if they have any documentation showing they met this requirement. It would probably be worth reading the other notes in that list as well, but most are pretty standard language. We can discuss more in the morning. Thanks. Well, it sounds like they had a lot of questions as to whether things went according to plan and this whole business about a naval architect. You know, the naval architect would presumably specify the type of barge equipment that was used, whether they were spudded barges, their location in the river channel, and so on. So let's look at a other email correspondence. Apparently there was no silk curtain installed around this demolition activity. So a silk curtain the purpose is to prevent off-site migration of suspended sediment, the type of sediment that would be dispersed when large chunks of concrete crash into the muddy river bottom. So you have this geosynthetic fabric and it's suspended from a boom. But we have this email from a representative of CRMC, which is the group that's providing the environmental monitoring of the demolition activity. It says, good morning. This is from uh, Amy Silva. Good morning, just a quick email to follow up on the site meeting held this morning to discuss the weekend's issue with the bridge demo. This was Monday, February 3rd. As discussed, a turbidity curtain will be installed ASAP around the two barges to contain any disturbances associated with removal of the in-water debris. All in-water debris shall be removed. Turbidity curtains will be installed around the barges for the planned demolition of the two remaining Gano Street spans. Please notify CRMC when the curtains are installed around the two barges currently in the river, as well as for each stage of the remaining demo. So it looks like they're scrambling here. Then on Wednesday, another email from Amy Silva. Anthony, this is RIDOT's project manager for Washington Bridge. We have a staff meeting this morning, and I'm sure our director will ask for an update. Has the turbidity curtain been installed around the two barges yet? Now, you'll remember, after all this news about the large sections of the bridge from the Gano Street ramp being dropped down onto the barges and material spilling into the river, they actually stopped demo activity for several days. So it looks like they were scrambling to get these demo curtains installed to resume the demolition activity. So the project manager emails back to CRMC. 
This is Wednesday, February 5th. Hi, Amy. I was going to reach out to you this morning with an update. The contractor was able to track down turbidity curtains late yesterday from a supplier in Massachusetts. They have them on site and are planning to install them today prior to removing the pieces of debris from the water. So again, that does explain the delay in the demolition activity that was observed in early February in my mind. So I'll continue to follow this story. I want to keep pushing back on the misstatements made, in my view, by Rhode Island Director by Rhode Island DOT Director Peter Alvini. I've noticed that various media sources now aren't really covering the Washington Bridge story for whatever reason. It seems to have just gone radio silent. I'm gonna keep doing my stories and I'm looking forward to the day when national media will pick up this story. This is essentially amateur hour relative to a DOT's operation, in my view. And that's with the, the management of Rhode Island DOT. I, I think there's undoubtedly very good people at Rhode Island DOT, just not at the top positions, in my view. So with that, I want to send a shout out to those of you who've contributed to Buy Me a Coffee. That's a great way to support the channel. I also want to thank you channel members and those of you who provided super thanks. It really enables me to do a lot of in-depth analysis and research for these stories that I continue to bring to you. So thanks very much, everyone.